In March of 1990, I was a 13-year-old, and my mother took me on a trip to Germany to visit some family friends. While we were there, we made a side trip to Berlin. Five months earlier, the wall that had split the city of Berlin in half for so long had opened up. And seeing the Berlin Wall it was like the side of freedom was covered in these murals and graffiti and a lot of fart jokes. <laughs> and that was a revelation to little 13-year-old me. The other thing was that the Berlin Wall was never supposed to be an art medium or an art venue, but it was also clear the art had won. So back home, I was a teenager. I got interested and involved in graffiti and murals. And as I grew older, I began to kind of fold the two together in t uh, while I traveled. Graffiti became this kind of, or painting in the streets, whatever you call it, became this kind of passport to the world for me. It took me to places I never thought I would go, introduced me to this whole community of people that shared the same passion. This was in Sao Paulo, Brazil in 1998 with four Brazilian friends. And I loved Brazil. So I went back again and again. I went back in 2001, and sort of a typical story with how walls work down there. I uh, painted this, and as I began painting it, I didn't have, like, authorization to paint it. <laughs> but as I started painting, all the neighborhood ladies, they kept coming up and giving me $5 or lunch. And they kept introducing me to their daughters. <laughs> so that was permission. Um, <laughs> This one was in uh, Kathmandu in Nepal. And over time, I got involved in these like formal invitation projects. This one was in Tegucigalpa in Honduras. And it started with the funniest email with this big subject header that said, an invitation from the First Lady of Honduras and the United Nations. And that, of course, ended up in my spam folder. But why I read it, I don't know. <laughs> that was what happened. I, I opened it, went to Honduras, painted that. The First Lady gave me a fruit basket. This one was last year. This was at a museum in Shenzhen, China, uh, right next to Hong Kong. And this was also uh, last year. This was a collaboration with a buddy from Brazil, a buddy from Austria. And this project took 40 artists together to paint 40 murals in two weeks in this one working class neighborhood in Seville, Spain. And the amazing thing, you know, you think of Seville and it's this, I mean, it's as historic as it gets. But in any city, no matter how historic, there's districts that need a little gussying up. What was amazing was seeing, after two weeks and 40 murals, more than 40, actually, that this area had been kind of like folded into the Seville of our imagination, and there were these camera-toting tourists where there were no camera-toting tourists before. And I also love to share. So from the time I was a teenager, I was contributing writing about art and artists to first graffiti fanzines and then to regular magazines and then to book projects like this, which took my co-author, Roger Gassman, and I five years, and it profiled 25 American cities through 40 years of graffiti development. This is also the one where I get to put my dog, Ferdinand, in the slide. What's up, dude? <laughs> the streets that I was painting and also sometimes mysteriously turned into museums and galleries, and these are a few local examples. This was at the Boston Center for the Arts. This one was last year at the Museum of Fine Arts, and I had a little help from 125 kids on this one. And this one is my latest one. This is just opened at the De Cordova in Lincoln. So for all that travel I was doing, I was always coming back here because it's home. I'm from here. But it also gave me this perspective, and, and I started thinking about visual messages of a city. And I kind of came to realize that I don't know if the visual message of our city really reflects a receptivity to creativity that's here. You know, we talk a lot about like talent retention, and I feel that's like the, the, the 20s and 30s age group that I am blazing through right now. But these are people who are kind of looking for the place that is going to hear their big idea and, you know, be receptive to their creativity. I want to propose to you all that more public art, big, adventurous public art, is a way to signal that receptiveness visually. So what do I even mean by public art? I should clarify. Basically, I mean not this. Not museum, not inside a museum, not in a gallery. So that goes for like the sculpture on the median strip or goes for the mural on the wall. But I also like to fold in a lot of indoor spaces, workspaces, lobbies, hallways, things like that. 
And traveling and seeing so much of this public art that really blew my hair back and made me say, wow, it kind of surprised me because it, it seems out of whack that I'm not getting that same wow here. Because it's not like we don't like art. Because if you look at the last 10 years, I mean, look, we just dumped approximately a gazillion dollars. <laughs> dumped's the wrong word. <laughs> Invested in the MFA, ICA, Gardner, Peabody, Essex. You know, and a lot of that's local and local money. And it tells us two things very clearly, I think. One is that we really love art. And two is that we're totally fine with putting money into making it a part of our lives. But then I step back and I think about something else, which is artists. And I've had the chance to meet hundreds of artists around the world, around the country, here. But it's really hard for me, as long as I've been here, to think of even a few artists who make their living from their artwork and not from, with the assistance of a side job like teaching. And you might just hear that and think, well, you know, a starving artist, nobody makes money. But that's really just not, kind of, not true. I could run through a list of people who have dozens of people in my own experience in many, many cities across the United States who make a living just fine. So, you know, the young artists of Boston figure that out too, and they kind of leave in droves. And the ones that really get me, the ambitious and talented ones who leave, are the ones that leave because they don't see a future here, but they didn't want to leave. So, I don't want to turn this into something about keeping artists in Boston, though, because that's not really the message. It's about keeping creativity here. And I think it's pretty clear from a conference like this, you have creativity is creativity, and it likes to be around other creativity. That's like the no-brainer of this. That goes for whether you're talking about molecules or paint, I think. And that brings me back to public art. This one was uh, a mural I did a couple of months ago in Berlin, Germany. Always fun to make a return trip there. And thank you to the U.S. Embassy. They put that together. But public art always sends these two messages. You know, there's, like any art form, you've got your, the representation, your visual message. But there's also this other kind of process element of public art, and that it's each piece of public art is kind of like this test case for what happens when you try something that is big, creative, awe-inspiring, and if it's any good, a little crazy in a city. So it's weird to walk around and not have... I think as much of it as we really can handle here. I don't want to suggest that it's a uh, city issue either. We've got so many amazing creative companies and businesses here that can handle it in ways that make sense to them in their own corners of the city. I wanted to point out one that I think is doing a great job. That's kind of unexpected. Children's Hospital. You walk into Children's Hospital and you get hit with art from all these different angles. And, you know, it's not all just trite kid stuff. Children's has this uh, saying for it, they call it creating a positive distraction. I think that is an excellent medical euphemism for making a trip to the hospital suck a little less. <laughs> and Children's is willing to take a risk with an art project. This, uh, these last two slides here were of a 52-foot mural in two parts that I painted in the main lobby there. The uh, mural stayed in the lobby for a number of months and then moved to permanent homes. That first one is in the uh, cardiac ICU, I think. And the risk, you know, in a hospital, this is a risk. We didn't have any sketches. We improvised the whole thing on site, in front of everybody, took suggestions, things like that. And, you know, with public art, you know, the fear is somebody's going to say something or complain. So that was a big risk. Children's also happens to be this absolute top of the pops children's hospital in the U.S. They're that good in part because of the art program and those steps that they take to make that successful. It's not in spite of it. They really get it about a visual environment. A visual environment, in their case, has to send a message to kids, to parents, and to the staff who work there. And they get it that that message is vital. So that's kids in a hospital. Now, we go back to that 20 and 30-something demographic. What do we do with them? How do we send the signal to them that this is the place for their big idea and their creativity? Massachusetts is, I guess, demographically one of the more rapidly aging cities in the country. And, you know, that's going to cause problems down the line. You know, I don't think that doing things with these walls is necessarily going to solve that, but it's a great way to signal to a lot of people 
that this is a place to listen to their ideas. The walls are the expensive part. They're already there. They're all around us. Paint's cheap. I think we can take these walls, partner them up with artists, and turn them from boring into awesome. If it's hard to reach out to artists, feel free. I know a ton here. There's a lot of talent. I'm happy to make connections. Young people are very mobile. They're going to settle where their passions are sustained and where their interests are sustained and where their friends want to be. <laughs> hey. Still a teenager. So I just want to leave you with the thought that I think the walls around us can go a long way to sending the message that this is the place for their creativity as well. Thank you so much.